Christopher Lynn, nice of you to make the time. I appreciate it very much, Minister. Great to be with you. I, I'm going to start with um, some of the news out of the update around how we're doing. Obviously, most projections suggest we're going to avoid a recession, um, but that difficult times are, are still ahead. Inflation is still too high, I think you would agree. Interest rates are still um, very high, and the economy is still going to be quite slow until 2025, 20, 2026, is I believe what you laid out. So, what do you say to Canadians who see that picture and are still very anxious about what's coming down the pipeline? Um, I would take, I won't surprise you by saying I would take a little more of a glasses half full perspective. Um, the day that I delivered the statement, we had the inflation number mm -hmm. th for October, which was 3.1%, down from a high of 8.1%. The bank target is one to three. So inflation really has come mm -hmm. down a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and as you said off the top, you know, when COVID first hit and, you know, as recently as a few months ago, the consistent prediction of pretty much everyone was we were definitely going to have a recession. And instead, as you point out, mm -hmm. the private sector economists who we survey before every statement are now forecasting that there will be a soft landing. So I think that's really good news compared to what people were expecting. Um, where I really agree with you is your point about interest rates. And you know, when I talk to people, the thing that I hear the most right now is people are concerned about interest rates, especially people who have mortgages mm -hmm. and are concerned about the renewal of their mortgages. And I think that is very, very understandable. Yeah. And that's why, you know, the thing that I have heard the most about from actual Canadians about the fall economic statement is our Canadian mortgage charter. Yep. Yep. Because, you know, that that's the first time in history that I know of that we've done this. And that really lays out for Canadians what you have a right to expect from your bank when you're renewing your mortgage. You can get relief. Uh, the top line there is you can seek a longer amortization period. And that could really mean that your monthly mortgage payment stays at a place that is affordable that you can stay in your own home. Okay. So that's the yeah. thing that I would really point to as challenge in the months to come yeah. and something we're doing to support Canadians so, so, through that. So I do have questions about that. So it, it, it is based on rules and expectations for the banks. That's what finance officials told us. How are rules and expectations for banks then enforced? We just expect them to comply? Is that how it works with the banking system? And is that enough, I guess? Well, the first thing I would say is it's a serious thing for the finance minister yeah to publish in black and white, in both official languages, our expectations for how the banks will be supporting their customers. Mm -hmm. That in and of itself is a big deal. Okay. And it's a big deal, and Canadians need to know about it. That's why I'm emphasizing yep. so much. Yep. Um, we also now are, and we said this a couple of weeks ago, um, empowering and supporting an independent ombudsman um, who will be the place that you can go to when you have right. concerns about your banks. Right. So that is a big deal. And then we have the Financial Consumer Agency of Canada that you can turn to. But the final thing I would say um, about the Canadian Mortgage Charter is it is something that we discussed extensively with the banks beforehand. Okay. And it is my hope, but also really my belief that the banks are going to work with us, the government, and work with Canadians to act on these commitments. Because I think we actually now have a shared national interest. You know, I want Canadians to get through this. I want Canadians to be able to afford their mortgages and keep their homes. And I believe that that is in the interests of the banks as well. And it, it certainly is yeah. in the interest of Canadians. If, if there are, I think there's something like more than 3 million Canadians who are going to be renegotiating their mortgages in the next 18 months. If that is the case, are there other measures that the federal government would look at in the upcoming budget? Are there other things that you could be doing to help protect people? Well, what I said in the fall economic statement on Tuesday is this is, you know, it is one of the things that I am watching the most closely. Um, we're going to watch it like a hawk, mm -hmm. like a bunch of hawks mm -hmm. in finance. And definitely we're prepared to do more as needed. Okay. The other thing that I really want to work towards, Rosie, is 
to help the Canadian economy get to a place where rates can go down mm -hmm. because that really is the best outcome for everybody. Another thing that you promised to look at more is a heating pump. So obviously we, we've seen this move from people home heating oil to heat pumps. Um, but in, in the update, you also say you're willing to consider a broader eligibility for people with um, natural gas or other, other ways that they're heating their home. I, is that the direction too? We should expect the federal government to move to allow all Canadians who want to transition to a heat pump to be allowed to do that? The commitment that we've made is actually really clear that where we are supporting a transition uh, with really very considerable financial support mm -hmm. is if you have home heating oil to really support people in getting a heat pump. And the reason home heating oil is really a special case is first of all, it is by far the most polluting form of fuel. So it makes sense to tackle that first. And the other thing is, you know, disproportionately, the people who use home heating oil across Canada are lower income and rural. So that really is our focus. But, but will you consider broadening it? Because it sounds like you, you, you are looking at that from what's in the update. So I just want to know whether there's a chance that that program could be, get bigger. The focus on heat pumps is let's start with people who have home heating oil. That is where the need is the greatest, both for people in their lives yeah. and also just in terms of getting our emissions down. There are concerns, obviously, about uh, servicing the federal debt and how those payments are now potentially crowding out other spending, pharmacare or, or whatever. Next year, the debt charges are expected to be 1.8% of GDP. That's about twice what they were during the pandemic. How concerned are you that those interest payments, not unlike a whole bunch of other Canadians, are now crowding out your ability to do other things you want to do? I really like the way you framed that question, Rosie, because when I think about high interest rates, um, you're exactly right um, that they are a challenge for every actor mm -hmm. in the Canadian economy. They're a challenge for individual Canadians, they're a challenge for Canadian businesses, they're a challenge for all levels of government. So my real focus right now yeah. is to act in such a way that our macro economy can be a, a place where rates can start to come down. That will be relief for everybody. Let me end on this. There is still a review of spending going on. We saw the beginning of it this fall, but, but more has to happen. How, how deep or significant will cuts be to services that Canadians rely on? Um, and what, what, could, what could we expect, I guess, in terms of dollar figures that you hope to bring back in? Um, there will be no cuts to services Canadians rely on, full stop. Um, and in terms of what we're going to do, there's no mystery there. Um, we published in the budget in the spring uh, our commitment to $15 billion of refocused spending. This is on the operations of government itself. Mm -hmm. We added a little bit to that in this fall economic statement. Um, and we will deliver. But let me really be clear. This is not about any services, anything that touches Canadians directly. And the purpose, it's not an end in and of itself. The purpose is that we know that Canadians need a lot of investments right now. I mean, Canadians need investments in housing, absolutely. We need to invest in things like childcare. We need to keep on doing that. We need to invest in our economic plan for jobs and growth. And in order to do that in a fiscally responsible way, we have to be thoughtful about the money the government spends on itself. Okay, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it.